North Korea as well. Significant criticism of the Bush administration on North Korea. Well, I'll tell you what, the North Koreans weren't sinking South Korean vessels during the Bush administration. Kim Jong-il, Kim Jong truly, ladies and gentlemen, is probably the most bizarre leader on the planet. He really is. I've been at many diplomatic functions with North Koreans. You can always figure out who they were. They were the guys standing in the corner with Kim Jong-il was looking at each other. Weird. <laughs> North Korean diplomats, how do they run their embassies? They don't get money. They sell drugs. They sell Almost every North Korean embassy in the world funds its operations by selling narcotics, ladies and gentlemen. That's how they do it. I was a CIA officer. We were out tracking terrorists, tracking narco traffickers, surveilling them. Who do they run into? Passing money to, the, to North Korean diplomats. It's always stunned to see that. That's how they do it. But, you know, President Obama and, and, and his policy advisors, their view of countries like Iran and North Korea are naive at best. This is, you know, this is Jimmy Carter, too. <laughs> we need to be able to support small business. Small business is the engine of America. It's got to be done with lower taxes. It's got to be, first of all, zero capital gains. We have to have zero capital gains. We have to make an environment where large businesses won't flee the state of New York. How many large businesses have fled here, leaving people high and dry? It's about taxes. It's about competitive tax rates. Zero on capital gains. The corporation moved from 35, which is the second highest percentage in the world, down to 25. It should go lower later, but we should go to 25 as the first stage. The death tax. You spend your life working and being taxed, almost taxed to death. <laughs> then as you pass away, they're going to tax you one more time. What a wicked tax. <laughs> My opponent in this race, Senator Schumer. What a guy. <laughs> First off, we all know the story of Senator Schumer on an airline not too long ago. The airline stewardess asks him to put his cell phone, and he uses the B word with her. He uses the B word. Not a very nice guy doing that. When I describe Senator Schumer, I use the A word. <laughs> that is arrogant, not the other word. Some politicians is that they believe that after a certain number of years in office that they're somehow better than the rest of us, better than the working folks. I began at $345 a month as an E1 in the United States Air Force. I worked as a security guard, I washed dishes, I washed tables, I've, 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 I've dug ditches on the West Mesa of, of uh, outside of Albuquerque. I've done a lot of things to survive and to help pay for my children and my life. My family. I don't believe I'm better than anybody. I believe that I have an equal opportunity here. I am grateful to the country that has given me so much, and I have found great pride and pleasure in giving back to that country that has helped me so much. It's not about me. <laughs> we need economic security, homeland security. National security here. These are the areas that we need to focus on. When we look at economic security, we're talking about a fact is that the world is both complex and there's significant competition. We've got to recognize in the years ahead that we're going to have to deal with energy and we're going to have to deal with manufacturing. We're going to have to manufacture again and we're going to have to find those markets. There are three markets out there right now that we need to be focusing on. India, China, and Brazil. Those are the three markets. Many people here don't know much about those markets. It's okay. 
I've spent my life working in these places. I understand these markets. I understand what we need to do to be competitive in those markets. Large companies in America will have an advantage, a natural advantage, in exporting. Smaller companies are going to need some assistance. But into those markets we must go. Brazil is something that's close to us. Brazil is an economy that is getting ready to break out, ladies and gentlemen. Large, large oil fines. The debt that they have is internal debt, not external debt. They borrow money from their own internal banks. It is economy, it, is a, it, it, it has 160 million people. It's got huge natural resources and they're great, they can be great partners of the US. That is the economy in our hemisphere that we need to be looking at. On energy, look at the Gulf crisis. Holy cow. Environmentalists pushed us so far offshore, pushed the oil companies so off, far offshore that they're in a place that when they went, once something went bad, they were unable to fix it. That doesn't mean we should be closing up all the oil down south. I've not heard Senator Schumer talk about this at all. No, no. Not a word. Quiet. <laughs> President Obama has discussed, you know, talk about shutting this down and efforts to shut down the oil, the oil wells offshore there is going to drive those rigs down to Brazil off the coast. They're going to lose tens of thousands of jobs, ladies and gentlemen. So let's kick them while they're down. That's what he's doing here. This is an opportunity to pay back his environmental friends. The hard left. They don't want any oil drilled here, anywhere. We need to drill in places that we have access on land. That if there's a problem, we can put the fire out. That's what Red Adair used to do. 5,000 feet down is tough. The problem with the Obama administration is we've just got witness to their crisis management abilities. It's frightening. It's like watching a horror movie. Really. The Obama administration, you don't get hope, you get fear watching this. I'm biting my nails off watching this. Had the Obama administration moved quickly, taken up the offer that the Dutch gave him to bring the skimmers in, worked hard to contain this thing in the first few days instead of telling jokes at the press club. That's where he was. Second night, press club. Great job, Mr. President. Great job. What a shame. The nation is in mourning for those down south in the Gulf. I have family in the south. I have family in the Gulf. Almost half my family lives down in home, Louisiana, south of New Orleans. My brothers worked offshore on platforms. My uncles have. It's an economy down there. It's a life down there. A life that is going to perish. We better hope that we don't have a hurricane soon. Yeah. If we do, it could be bad. I'm incredibly disappointed by, by this administration's failure to understand threats, problems, and act on them. Senator Nelson of Florida the other day Day 50 says, we have no idea who's in charge. <laughs> James Carville on day 39 in an interview said, well, President Obama's not focused, but once he's focused, I think it's going to be his greatest moment. Yeah. Give me a break, James. <laughs> have we heard anything from Chuck Schumer on this? No. Hey, wall. After the convention, and I want to tell you at the convention, the Tea Party came out for me. The reason I'm standing here today, the reason I'm standing here today, is that buses of Tea Party supporters went to the convention, got out in front, large numbers, got on the floor. I knew I had about 30% of the, of the delegates in my pocket that I needed. I needed 51. The excitement, the energy they brought, brought me up to 50, 42 on the first vote and 62 on the second.